Many Christian leaders feel that America's only real hope today is revival. But you can't buy the Holy Spirit like Simon the Magician tried to do in the book of Acts. Peter rebuked him for this. One of the key elements of revival is that often God sends it when his people humble themselves. Just like 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, if my people will humble themselves. Recently at Asbury College, a chapel service with long periods of fervent prayer and repentance broke out, according to many eyewitnesses, into revival. That's not the first time revival has broken out on American campuses. Christian speaker and author, the late Dr. Marshall Foster, explains. It's interesting that all of the early colleges, the, what we call the Ivy League schools today, except for Cornell, were founded to the glory of God and for the purposes of God. Um, and it's interesting that when, for example, the Second Great Awakening happened during the period of the 1780s and 90s, um, it was the college campuses had began to become hotbeds of, of uh, the thinking of the revolution of France, and they were getting involved in all kinds of enlightenment thoughts, and they, they were drinking, smoking, and chewing, going with girls are doing, falling away from the faith. In the midst of all that, um, they were brought back with a second great awakening in 1795. Uh, beginning at um, Yale University with the great-grandson of Jonathan Edwards, uh, Timothy Dwight. And Timothy Dwight then became the headmaster. And when he did, he went in there and taught in each of the uh, classrooms the biblical principles and debated the atheists because most of the school had become atheistic. And he brought at least half of the students back in a period of three years. And uh, that, as a result of that, that, that faith spread now to Williams College and all the other schools and a, a great awakening spread throughout America that lasted for more than a generation. At Williams College, five boys met and began to meet secretly because in those days Christians were not popular on the college campus until this awakening sprung. These five young boys went on to have what's called the Haystack Revival and a series of things happened. They founded the missionary movement in America and 11 years later they had founded the, the uh, Missionary Society and they went out and reached Asia beginning with Korea and Hawaii, and it's spread now, of course, all over the world. But it began in these Ivy League schools. We've just been listening to the late Dr. Marshall Foster talking about Christian revivals that bore much fruit on some of the campuses of America a couple hundred years ago, schools that were given birth for the glory of God and to spread Christianity. Foster mentioned Timothy Dwight, the president of Yale in the late 1700s. Timothy Dwight said this, quote, where there is no religion, there is no morality. With the loss of religion, the ultimate foundation of confidence is blown up and the security of life, liberty, and property are buried in ruins, end quote. Aren't we seeing that a lot today? Because too many of our elites in America are explicitly rejecting God even though he's the source of our lives and liberties. Truly, we need revival today. For Providence Forum, I'm Jerry Newcomb.